without faith, it is impossible to preach. To, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know, um, I have I have thought about this many times. Why is it that without faith we cannot please God? Because it says here in our text, I'm glad that you could read it yourself. I was wondering if I should read it from a, from a Bible because I thought like, what if the brethren did not bring their Bibles? Anybody did not bring their Bibles today? Don't go out without it. When we were kids, I hate to carry the Bible when we go to church on Sabbath because our Bible is so big at that time. The Gainer Bible, the, law, the dialect Bible, the English Bible translated to the dialect is so big. But now, brothers and sisters, I know you have brought few Bibles. And you have brought a, a whole library with you, didn't you? And sometimes it's a temptation that when you all go to that library, there's some other things that you will notice and that it sounds more important than the Word of God. Okay, so now we have Brother Sunny uh, printed these uh, verses so that you don't have to just, just read, okay? You know what I mean. Anyway, uh, it is very important that we have, there, is a re there are many reasons for having the faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. How can you please God when you don't know the gospel? The gospel message, Jesus is the essence of the gospel message. And the gospel is free. For by grace are we saved, what? By faith. By, for by faith we are saved through, what? For by, what, how did I suddenly forget? For by grace are ye saved through faith. So the everlasting gospel when preached to us, when preached to the people, and they believe it, they accept it, then that is then we have it. But it is free. And yet, while it is free, we need to have something to accept it. We need something to receive it. And I'm telling you, to most people, faith is so difficult to own, to have. And as I said, we cannot own it, we do not have it. We have to get it from, from something. But here is another text that I would like to read to you. In 1 John 5, 4, Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and it is our faith. We can overcome only when we are born of God. So first, we accept the gospel, and then we have a new birth, and then we are saved because uh, Hebrews tells us that there is no other salvation except in Jesus. So that's the essence of the, of the gospel, Jesus. We have to accept him. And when we accept him, we what? We overcome the sin. It's already gone. It's gone away because the Lord forgives us. And we have to overcome and then we continue on. Continue on overcoming. Some people, you know, ask me, are you saved? Yeah, I'm saved, right? Are you saved? Yes. Are you saved? Yes. Saved, saved, yes, we are saved. And they say, okay, that's enough. One saved, always, always saved, yes. correct? Yes. Wrong, very wrong. Because when, when we are saved by Jesus, he continues to save us. Mm -hmm. We have to be to continue to be to being saved. We have to be, continue to be in saved, and that is uh, it is only our faith that enables us to remain saved. Because see, we are overcoming. We are overcoming. And there is another text. There will be some few texts that we are using today. One is in Jude. 
1, 24, and 25. Let's see how the Lord is taking us. Now unto him, can we read it together? I like this study for us to be together. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Both now and forever, the Lord is continuing to save us. Okay. You know how Jesus is saving us? After he died on the cross for us and he was resurrected, he went back to heaven. Sitting down, doing nothing. Is that correct? Wrong. What Jesus is doing is entering into the entered into the most holy place and is working for our salvation. Amen. He is continuing to saving us. That's why in our lesson this morning I said, what is the relationship of helping the needy and our salvation? Because the king said, Come, ye blessed my father and inherit the kingdom prepared for you. What is the relationship? You, you gave drink, uh, cold water to drink to somebody who's thirsty, food to somebody who's hungry, clothing to those who are naked, and, and visiting the people in the, in the prison house. What is the relationship with being saved? If you do that, will you be saved? Yes. Why? Said, works don't save, but faith does. Works don't save, but faith does. Because when we come to, when we accepted Christ, we have overcome our past sinful lives, and He starts working on us day by day. The relationship is that when we do these things for the needy, helping other people, we are gradually transformed. Our character changes. When we get used to helping people, we get used to feeding hungry people. We get used to that. We don't realize it, but being helpful and being, uh, you know, attending, reaching out to people is gradually changing us. Mm. With Jesus' help, we are changing. One day you will just be surprised why is it that you cannot ignore the needs of people around you? Because it has become, it has become your second nature to be helpful without any effort. You start, you know, intentionally doing this. I go to my neighbor and see if they have something to eat. No. But after that, when you're used to doing that without any intention, the next thing you know, you will find the hungry. You will find the thirsty all around you. Because you have changed. You're a different person now. And the Lord has changed you. And how did you get changed? By faith. It's only by faith. And that faith, you know, that faith, is not ours. It was given to us. And we are told in Philippians 1 6 that He who started a good work in us by giving us the gospel, our acceptance, our acceptance, our forgiveness, acceptance, and then start growing in Jesus. We call that sanctification, or, or they call that in, uh, in theological. Uh, Parlance, they would call that uh, first the justification by faith and then sanctification by faith too. First is what did we call that? Um, Im imputed righteousness. Have you heard that word? Imputed righteousness. We didn't earn it at all. It is Christ's righteous life that He gave, is giving to us, and we stand before Him as if we have not sinned at all. You know, he, Jesus is also called the second Adam. Why? Because he lived the life here on earth the way Adam should have lived if Adam did not disobey. Right? So because Adam disobeyed and fell into sin, Jesus came <coughs> and called that he redeemed us. Jesus came and lived the life that Adam should have lived. And he lived a perfect life in spite of the temptation that the, enemy, that the enemy was giving him. He did live that a perfect life. So this, this faith with which we live day by day that transforms us and 
by which we accepted, we accepted the grace of salvation comes to us as a gift too from, from Jesus. 